Let's start simple. You don't need a bootcamp, fancy software, or a $3,000 laptop to break into UI UX in 2025. Here's the roadmap on how to actually get on the inside. Most people start by learning UI design. They learn how to make a landing page, style a button, maybe even design a portfolio. And then they hit a wall because no matter how polished the visuals are, no one's hiring them just for that. Think of UI design like learning to decorate a single room. Product design is more like learning how to design the entire house the flow, the function, the wiring, and how it all connects. Let's take Linear as a good example. It looks beautiful, but that's not why people love it. The real strength in Linear is its clarity. The states, the flows, and the system make it feel effortless. Hover over an issue, you get context. Create a new project, there's an empty state guiding you. Even the status animations are subtle, but meaningful. And if you can put together a portfolio with products that solve a problem like this one, you'll be so much more likely to land a job. And that's the power of product design. And it really just revolves around three key ideas. First of all, most designers just design the happy path, the perfect screen. But real apps need to handle all the states users actually experience. Empty states, loading states, success messages, tiny moments that make or break the experience. Here's an example from dub.co. When you land on the dashboard, it doesn't leave you staring at a blank screen. There's a thoughtful empty state with an animation, a message, and a clear next step. Or take Vercel. When you deploy a project, you're not just guessing if it worked. Immediately, you get a notification about the build status, so users are never left guessing. These aren't just UI details. They're design decisions that keep users informed and in control. If we were to apply that to our own hiring management tool, we could start with the sidebar. When the user goes to integrate with the tool like Notion, we could have an informative loading state and either a success message or an error message once finished. Or, just like Dub, we could have a single empty state if there are no hirees to manage and a call to action to start posting job links. Next, build for flow. Instead of thinking in sections like you would for a website, think in screens and sequences like you would for a real application. That might sound obvious when you're looking at a fully built flow, but when you're constructing them, you need to ask how the user got there and what they need next. For example, in Notion, if a user wants to add a team space, they head to settings, team spaces, and click on new team space. Then the user is prompted to name it. Notion could have just closed everything once they hit create, but of course, what's a team space without team members? So they immediately prompt to add team members with the option to skip. That's a thoughtful user flow. On our web app, if the employer wants to reach out to an applicant, they can click this. Then they'll be prompted to select an email from their templates. Finally, they'll be asked if they want to add any other applicants before sending. That's not just one design, that's three tiny decisions all chained together. And product design is about making these tiny transitions feel natural. But speaking of that, sometimes the best way to understand product design is to see your designs come to life. That's where today's sponsor, Dualite Alpha, comes in. Just grab your Figma link, paste it in, and Dualite pulls out your layout, styles, and components. Hit go, and in under two minutes, you've got a fully functional web app. It's perfect for building your portfolio or launching your first real product. I used it to bring the hiring dashboard from this video to life, and you can check it out with the first link in the description down below, and use my code to get 38% off. Finally, as products get more complex, the need for clarity becomes even more important. And that's where design systems come in. A design system isn't just aesthetic, it's how users build trust and speed with the product. For example, this simple macOS pop-up has saved me so many times because the primary color is the non-destructive action and I trust that it's always that way. Or open up Linear and you'll see it everywhere. Whether you're in a settings panel or creating a view, the buttons, spacing, textiles are all exactly the same, even when used in wildly different contexts. Pulling out some components from our example, we've maintained spacing on buttons, type scales, and color scheme throughout. Because of this, if we were to create a modal when the user clicks create listing, it would be super easy. We'd start with some quick template selectors, then add fields for the title, description, and some tags. Finally, we'd add the actions at the bottom. Compare that to our other modals, and you can see how every new screen starts to feel familiar, even if the content is different. But it's not about having hundreds of components. It's about making a decision you can stick to. And when you combine that with strong flows and real states, you're no longer designing pages, you're building products. And that is everything I have for you today. The files for the full web app on Duolite will be the first link in the description, and the Figma files will be down there too. Other than that, I hope you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one.